Welcome to Minimal List. We are Joe, Michael and Springer Spaniel George and we've been continuously cruising on our narrowboat Perseverance since 2017. Perseverance turns out to be a very appropriate name for our boat as over the last four years we've been on a quest to go absolutely everywhere on the connected waterways of England and Wales. Which also led me to create some tube style maps of the waterway system which we sell online. It's now time to give Perseverance some very overdue TLC and tackle all of the jobs that we've been planning and putting off since we moved aboard four years ago. It's so weird to be sitting here without Michael next to me, but he's off doing other things today and I'm here editing. And I started to edit this first video, which we filmed a week or so ago. And the introduction that we both filmed, honestly, we sound so stressed out. No, I just couldn't bear to put it in. So, and, we, and also we didn't say everything that I wanted to say. So I'm just doing it again. So just to catch you up, if you don't follow us on social media, our cruising videos are quite behind at the moment. Um, I think the last one I put out, we were in Bedford and we were there in August. And we actually finished our quest to go everywhere last month, October. And I've got, uh, yeah, maybe 20 or so more videos to edit. Um, and I'm gonna try and get one out every Sunday um, from now on. And in real time, we have stopped moving. We're still living on the boat, um, but we had started the renovations and we got a lot of feedback from people that they wanted to see what we were doing. So we're going to try and video and, and vlog all of those as well. But I didn't want to not put the renovation videos out till after the cruising videos had finished. So I'm going to alternate them. So at the moment, I'm thinking a cruising video on Sunday and a renovation video midweek but obviously that could all change depending on how much time I get to edit which is not much and um yeah how we how we get on with the renovations so our plan at the moment is to do the inside of the boat over winter and then in the spring give perseverance a bit of a repaint which she desperately needs um we have been so lucky and we've met a narrowboater through the channel who has so kindly offered us his boat to stay on while we're doing the renovations. We haven't quite moved on yet because it's still livable on Perseverance, but I'm guessing in the next week or so that won't be the case. So we'll be able to move on to their boat um, and you know have water and a kitchen and a bed while our boat becomes a workshop. Um, talking of workshops, they have also got a massive, well-equipped workshop a few miles from where we are. Um, and they've given us access to that, which is amazing um, because if you've ever tried to do a renovation inside a narrow boat, it's really hard. So thank you, thank you so much to them for helping us out with this. So this one is the very first uh, video in our renovation series and Michael's just giving a walkthrough of the boat, um, talking about what we're planning to do over the next few months. Um, you might also find it interesting to go back and look at the tour of our narrow boat. Um, that we filmed in 2017, about a month after we've moved aboard. I watched it today and it's actually really funny to, to hear the things we said when we were brand new to boating compared to kind of what we think now four years later. Um, so I've linked that below. It's worth a watch if, um, if you are interested. So hopefully this is the first of uh, many videos. We'd love to have your feedback. So do comment down below with any ideas you have of what we should be doing um, and give the... <laughs> give the video a thumbs up too. <laughs> okay, so one of our big problems, um, although I'm still not sure what we're going to do about it, love some advice if anybody's got any, uh, was originally when we bought the boat, there was no cover over our rear hatch. Our rear hatch is really just kind of a um, thin sheet of metal with some bent down sides. It's not really well fixed. Uh, Liverpool boats changed the design quite a bit in later models. And on the inside, what there really is, is just a, a sheet of plywood. And there was quite a bit of water damage that got into the plywood itself. And has also caused a little bit of issue on the wood in here. Um, and some water damage on this cabinet door. So there's a certain amount of trying to figure out how to repair water damage. Uh, including for some MDF. <sighs> we'll see how much we can do with that. Um, the veneer on the MDF is kind of hard to figure out exactly how to patch that without completely replacing it. And luckily it's only the one door that's actually damaged to the MDF. The rest of it is um, ply and, and, you know, actual wood. And so we should be able to just sand it back and possibly bleach it a little bit and refinish it. We have a couple of electrical issues. Um, our 
current inverter is a 325 watt inverter down in the cupboard here that we use day to day. It's a Victron Phoenix. It's a really good inverter, but just not quite enough power because we can't run things like a rice cooker, slow cooker, etc. We had originally planned to use the 3 kilowatt Sterling inverter that's in here that is a modified sine wave inverter, so it's not a true square wave. Um, however, we used that in the beginning. It makes some kind of funny sounds, but that might just be the coils getting ready and everything. The modified sine wave inverter is supposed to be fine for things that are like not smart appliances. So if we were running a washing machine, that's why we kept it, was just in case we ever put in a washing machine. Um, we never did put in a washing machine. There's no real possibility of putting in a washing machine. The inverter is currently completely disconnected and is basically just a big lump that's taking up room back there. So we're going to pull that out and, I don't know, put it on eBay or get rid of it. Um, the inverter that's down here is a little too small. Replacing it with a larger inverter up to about 800 watts would give us the power that we need to do, you know, the rice cooker and things. And wouldn't cost too much in terms of electricity. If we wanted to go any more, we'd have to move the inverter out of here and move it in under the bed where the batteries are for sure. Because the other thing it will do is under the bed it will increase the warmth of the air under the bed which will keep some of the moisture out, which is the other problem we've got to deal with back here. Underneath the bed there are currently three panels of MDF that the bed sits on top. And then there is another piece of MDF which has been used to make a pullout that the bed rides on. We are going to pull out those MDF sheets. Um, luckily we have a wood shop available to us. So we're going to pull out the wood MDF sheets and make replacements in buffalo board. Um, and we are going to replace the pullout mechanism in buffalo board. Because the thing that the MDF panels have done slowly, as there's been moisture down there, is they've slowly but surely started to warp down as if you're bending into the um, the wood, quote unquote wood. But that's pretty much it for the bedroom. Um, we do want to replace the LED lights. They are currently like a, a cheap off of Amazon just direct bulb replacement. Generally within about a year of replacing them we've got either some flicker or some color shifting towards more of a yellow color or they've just outright died or lost power. Um, same with the bulbs we use in our little, you know, halogen down lighters where we replace those with LEDs to save power. Those bulbs also tend to burn out. Um, the ones in the kitchen have completely gone. The ones in the bedroom are, are doing the flickering thing again. So other than that, there's some cosmetic things like uh, we have the bungs that we put into the windows now. We don't use the curtains, never have. So we're going to pull off the hardware and just use a little bit of wood filler to fill in the screws. So obviously this is a little bit tight for me, but this is our Liverpool Boat Company um, 10 gang control panel. And it has uh, a nice little battery check button. It lets us check either of the two banks and it has all of the switches for everything, including some nice little notes we got from the original owner to never turn that guy off and things like that. Um, the the issue is, is that we've rewired this a couple of times, but some of the switches are going and I haven't been able to find replacement switches for this. They should just be some sort of DIN switch, but I think they've got an inbuilt circuit breaker because I'm pretty sure I remember at least one of them flicking over itself. Um, yeah, they got a reset on them, so they are circuit breakers. The issue is, is that um, there is a company called, I think it's Acon or Axon that makes a drop-in replacement for this, but they're out of stock. And every other unit that I've found is a completely different shape and size. So, um, yeah, it would be nice to get a drop-in replacement for that or to find replacements for the individual lights because this switch in particular has gotten to the point where if we don't kind of fiddle with it and get it into exactly the right position, a bunch of the down lighters just die or they start to flicker. Uh, yeah, bit of a pain because the actual wiring of it is all in the bathroom. Right, so the bathroom itself. Well, the bathroom is actually kind of the, well, one of the biggest problems we've got. The shower, the tiles in the shower are tired. Um, they're all intact, but the grout has gone on a lot of it. The bath works for us. We don't want to replace the bath, um, and it's in pretty good condition, but it needs sealing again. 
And the faucets, though, are not great. Um, our shower here is, it's, it's just not very comfortable. Um, it's in a position where, because the roof slopes down, if I'm standing under the shower, the top of it is really just touching the top of my head. So it would be nice to get some sort of a, a, a another shower outlet that can be a little bit more towards the center. And the mixing tap down there works, I, I find, pretty badly. Like, I, I'm either scalding myself or freezing cold. Um, so it would be nice to get that done as well. The rest of the bathroom is more of a problem of the way that it was originally constructed. Um, basically... We've got the wood paneling on the roof. We've got the wood paneling on the wall. We've had to do the insert, like the drill through the wall to put in the airflow out for our um, composting toilet, which has been fine. But because we replaced the original toilet with a composting toilet, our toilet has been raised up by essentially about oh, an inch and a half, almost two inches, because that was raised up to allow for the plumbing of the pump out. The pump out being gone, it doesn't really make much sense to have our normal size um, waterless slash composter slash um, uh, separating toilet raised up so that we end up sort of tippy toeing when we're trying to use it. So we'd like to get rid of the platform that that was in there to allow the roughing in of the of the pump out plumbing. There is also a kind of V-shaped portion behind that, which is where the plumbing actually went for the outflow of the pump out. Then there's our sink, which this is the part that really annoys me about this one, is, is the, the toilet has to be mounted at a 45 degree angle, primarily because were you to mount it at a straight angle and, and sort of try and get under there, your arm would have to be up against the gunnel because the sink is huge. The sink dominates the bathroom and the storage cupboard underneath it takes up so much room and what we're hoping to do is just remove all of that and put in a very small sort of vanity style sink and a vanity style cupboard but the sink has been placed on the inside of the boat away from the through hole the toilet was placed on the outside closer to the through hole that makes it so that the sink has to use a pump in a little um, sump basin to actually get its outflow water out of the boat it would really be better if there wasn't a pump involved at all if we move the sink over to where the toilet is, then we can have it just simply drain out the um, outflow and just be done with it. However, taking out all of that woodwork and all of the sink and everything requires that we end up redoing the floor as well, so we're going to have to do um, a new flooring panel in here. Now then there's also the possibility of us getting rid of the composter toilet, um, because although we have worked to figure out ways of making it so that we can store it longer and deal with it properly and all of that, uh, it does add a lot of trouble. So going to a either a um, incinerator toilet should we suddenly win the lottery. The other option is we can just replace it with a cassette toilet, which if we, for my schooling, move into a marina or anything like that, will be more convenient anyway. That's pretty much it for the bathroom. Uh, the paneling in here has suffered a little bit with the moisture. Moisture is an issue in here. So another thing I'd like to do is take the existing mushroom cap outflow and put an actual extractor fan on there that would run on the same circuit as the lights. So you flip on the lights and the extractor fan turns on like in a normal human bathroom. Um, having the extractor fan would probably reduce all of the moisture and eliminate the problem we've got in here where the grain has gone darker because of soaking up some of the water from the condensation. We also will look at whether or not this is an area where we could think about doing repainting um, and or whitewashing to see how it looks. We've got a small surface and we're not going to be making major changes. It's just going to be to the bathroom. A brighter solid color white bathroom will be nicer to begin with. Um, I would like to do some tiling around the, the uh, walls and everything and to make it all a little bit prettier but at the end of the day that's a lot of work compared to just putting in a good coat of paint and everything so I think we might end up using paint for this but it would be a good time to try out um, experimenting with different finishes for the actual oak paneling, which is a consideration for the rest of the oak. So the kitchen is, well, almost everything comes down to 
the kitchen surface. Um, this sink faucet we put in oh, a year ago, not even a year ago, six months ago, I don't know, last year. Um, the original one started to develop a leak at some point. We didn't notice the leak. Uh, eventually we went to use the sink and rotate the faucet and the whole piece of linoleum here wobbled. Um, I did what is clearly a bodge fix by putting in uh, essentially two pieces of plywood and making a sandwich with a bunch of screws and bolts and things because really underneath this piece of plywood there is just two pieces of linoleum and some air because all of the MDF has rotted out. Um, we did look at replacing the sinks and the faucet in one go. That was what we were hoping to do. We were looking around the different options, but the reality is, is that, um, the way that our, <laughs> the way that our surface has been dimensioned and built, we couldn't find a sink that could replace these two. Um, we, yeah, we could find single sinks that were like half the size. We could find sinks that were the right sort of length, but were totally too wide and wouldn't fit. Um, it was just a pain. It would also be nice to have a different faucet. Um, but all of that requires getting the new unit uh, in place for the, for the uh, kitchen counter. Now, the fun part will be that below here is this fairly large unit made primarily out of kind of hacked together two by fours with some MDF shelves. Some of the MDF shelves have gotten water damage because of the leak that we're happening in here. Um, those shelves will need to be replaced. They're, you know, kind of routed out on sides, a little bit unusually shaped. So that's going to be a good fun in the workshop. Um, there's, you know, cleanup and refreshing of the windows and stuff. It'd be nice to make it brighter in here. It would be nice to go with another extractor fan, possibly. Um, there are extractor fans that have a down light as well, which would be good because there isn't always that much light on the cooking surface. Um, these lights up here have the same problem with flickering, and there's the switch. Um, they have the same problem that we have with the other down lighters where there's been some flickering, and so the inside one here has died, the, the one there has died. Um, yeah, so... Yeah, it'd be nice to get it kind of redone. The one thing that I might think about doing is making it so that the countertop is a single piece and curving it off here and inside here so that there's no um, kind of sharp angle edges or anything to bump into as you're trying to get through the boat, which there are currently. The tiles in the kitchen are also like the bathroom, not in the worst condition. Um, in fact, they're in better condition. There, there hasn't been, you know, there's not really any cracks in the grout or anything that I've found, but it would be nice as a, you know, since we're already ripping out the countertops and everything, it would be nice to put in some subway tiles or something to make it a little bit brighter as well. The other issue that we've got to deal with is the flooring. Um, we've got this linoleum wood effect stuff in the kitchen and it's been ratched up, it's been scratched, there's been knives dropped and things that have, you know, done some damage to it and everything, so we need to replace that. Um, it's always felt really weird to have the kitchen have this tiny little patch of its own type of flooring and the rest of the boat have its separate. It made sense because they went with carpet on the majority of the length of the boat and with the wood paneling in here. Um, I'd rather do like tongue and groove wood for the whole length of it or possibly the same wood effect linoleum because that might be easier to put down. Um, but yeah, we'll see. So the front of the boat, well, basically our dinette area is pretty good. Um, it's pretty comfortable. It would be nice for it to be brighter. The light up there has always been a little bit, uh, well, of a bodge, like the way that it was installed. One of the switches just, every time you try and turn it on or off, the switch would push into the light. And uh, it has had to be replaced a few times. It's also not very bright, but it, you know, it sort of works. The surface, here has come in very useful for us as a, as a sort of working desk and a table, but um, it's definitely gotten to the point where it needs resurfacing. The rest of the front of the boat, you know, the main thing that I would like is to figure out a way of brightening it up. There aren't too many lights. We have these speakers um, that we don't use and which are actually broken. Um, so 
I, I'd like to replace those, but that will probably require replacing this whole centerpiece because otherwise we end up with the holes where the speakers were. Catch-22 sort of thing because that's a, it's, it's only a thin little piece of wood, but it's held in with these little 90 degree pieces, which are all held up with brads and yeah, it's a bit of a demolition job to get it down. And then once you've got it down, if you can avoid snapping any of those pieces of wood, then how do you get it all back together again safely? The other issue is, is I'd like to put in extra lights, but the speakers aren't really a good place to put lights. So I'm not, you know, yeah, I just like to figure out a better way of getting more lighting into the boat. It would also be good to brighten it up by repainting the roof, but we don't really want to cover over the wood. And so we've been thinking about doing kind of a whitewash or a bleach um, to lighten the oak up. It's not real. I mean, it is oak paneling, but, um, you know, it's not like all of it is oak paneling. A lot of it is oak veneer. So not everything will be easy to refinish. Um, we're going to test out the idea in the bathroom and see how that works in terms of actually making it any lighter. Because uh, for me, for my mental health, it, it, it's just much nicer to actually have it be more a lighty. Um, the, the wood as is is fairly orange. And even on a bright sunny day when you've got all the windows open inside here, it kind of dims it all down. We were thinking about replacing our stove with a diesel stove, but um, that's not really practical unless we know for sure we're keeping a boat for a couple of years. Don't want to make that decision for anybody else. And if this is our last winter aboard, or if this is, you know, sort of our last winter full time aboard, well, then a partial use of the boat, it would be fine to have solid fuel. Um, I do think that for little boards, the diesel would be the better choice, but um, yeah, it's it's a, a big job to do that replacement and we'd have to get a gas fitter in and everything. So instead, we're going to probably pretty much leave it where it is. The stove does need some refurbishment, um, but you know, that's not too hard to do. And then at the front of the boat, so at the front of the boat, we have, um, a couple of the brass panels that are used for the louvers for ventilation um, broke over time. The there's one at the back now. It's not it's not very visible. This one it's both visible and we now have it removed entirely so that we've got quite a bit of flow through there. So I'm gonna have to replace that. Um, unfortunately, I've got a brand new extremely shiny brass plate, so I think I'm just gonna have to replace all of them. The other thing that it would be nice to do is to either replace this unit um, with something that's just a little bit thinner and would allow us a place to put... We're always tripping over our own shoes and there's nowhere to put, um, you know, kind of jackets and everything near the front of the boat. We always end up leaving them hanging at the very back of the boat. We come in and off the front of the boat all the time, so that's just kind of inconvenient in the winter and everything. This unit is big enough that it gets in the way as you come down the stairs and stuff, or at least does it for me. And, uh, and this storage area in here really just ends up getting used as generic throw everything that we don't have a better place for in their storage, um, which has really been a, a pain. Um, so yeah. And then lastly, it's the steps here. They have obviously been through it in terms of the amount of people walking up and down and everything. So they could use some refinishing, but they could also use some handles so that you can pull them in and out easily. So that's it. Those are the things that we want to do on the interior of the boat. Uh, the biggest jobs are going to be the bathroom and the kitchen and whatever we decide to do for the surfacing in the front of the boat where there is just a lot of square footage of oak. If we keep it dark, then we really need to increase the number of lights and we need to make sure we've got a lot of daylight bulbs in them. If we brighten it up, then we don't need to worry about, about putting in all of that wiring and dealing with all of the lights. So, you know, we'll see which way that goes. George doesn't really care how bright it is. He just wants to go somewhere for him to go outside and chuck a ball around. So I think we can make sure that that happens pretty soon, okay? Yeah, so that was basically kind of a heads up of what it is we are currently planning on doing. We're going to film as much as we can, and we're going to release videos as often as we can. Um, we are probably going to run into a few situations in which we do sort of a 
uh, please give us some ideas on how to deal with this problem as we run into those. Um, but we'll see. Those might come out on Twitter rather than on YouTube. So with any luck, keep you up to date as the work happens and progresses and we get ourselves back to what is hopefully a livable boat. And hopefully don't set it on fire. Mm -hmm.